money stays the way it is. When we talk about al-hajr, we're talking about freezing for a reason. And most of the time when we talk about it, freezing it from the access of the owner. So the one who's in charge can use this money to pay off his loans or his debt, not his loans, his debt. Okay? For example, and we will talk about this as we get to it. And the dalil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُؤْتُوا السُّفَهَا أَمْوَالَكُمْ الَّتِي جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ قِيَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, don't give the sufaha. Sufaha could be little kids who don't have mind enough or experience enough to use their money. It could be crazy people. It could be people who are naive who cannot use their money. Do not give them their money. Do not give them access to their money because they might not know how to spend it. All right? So that is the deal from the Quran. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَابْتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ in the same surah. Actually the next ayah. وَابْتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ okay. حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغُوا النِّكَاحَ فَإِنْ آنَسْتُمْ مِنْهُمْ رُشْدًا فَاتْفَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ أَمْوَالًا when, when an orphan is still young and little and you know the ulama say like an orphan is uh, usually once the, the kid reaches the age of puberty he's not an orphan anymore because you find some people coming and they, they're collecting the donation and the guy is orphan okay how old is he? 30 <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's very important. So when, when these kids die, their parents die or their dad or whatever, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the right for wasi. Someone might be the father put in his will. Someone who might be in charge of him, an uncle, a grandfather, whoever. They become in charge of their money. But it's a trust. Okay, it's a trust. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so you prevent them from having وَبْتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ They prevent them from having their money until they reach that age. Okay? Where they can manage their own money. Where they are so fit to handle their own money. Then you give them their money. You give them their money. Okay? So it's very important. So this is the deal also. You can hold the access of someone to his money for a purpose. Okay, for a purpose. And here we're talking about, about this specific issue. But what our topic is about, I was wrong, is a day and day. All right. Also, the Prophet ﷺ uh, did Hajr on Mu'ad. Mu'ad radiallahu an was in debt. And the Prophet ﷺ uh, froze his Mu'ad's money or took it from him or prevented him from having access to it. And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam paid off Mu'ad dip from his own, from Mu'ad's money. Okay? From Mu'ad's money. That's in the Sunnah. And when we talk about the Hajr, the ulama divide into two types. Okay? Into two types. One is Hajr for the person's own benefit. nafsi. And the second is Hajr for other people's benefit. Okay? Sometimes the hakim or the qadi or the jurist or the, the judge uh, will give a verdict that so and so has no access to his money. That can be for the person's own, the owner of the money benefit and it can be for other people's benefit. Such judgment such order, court order, okay, because of this, can be for the person himself, the one who has the money's benefit, or for the benefit of other, of other uh, people. <clears throat> and the ayat that we mentioned are the dalil for one. The ayah about, وَلَا تُؤْتُوا السُّفَهَا أَمْوَالَهُ And do not give the naive or the youngsters or the people who cannot handle their money, don't give them the money. وَابْتَلُوا الْيَتَامَ The orphans' money. Don't give it to them. Like, don't give it, don't give them access to it. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Allah is very It's good. Uh, is it for hajr for your for own persons or hajr for the benefit of others? For the persons themselves. Good. 
They tell you, don't give an orphan, some five years old, inherit million dollars. You don't take the million dollars, it belongs to him, but you don't give him the million dollars. You might burn it, you don't know. He doesn't know million dollars, what it means. Okay, so the person who's in, in guardianship of them or who's guardian over them, keeps the money and prevent them from having access to it. Okay, that means when the five years old comes to the, to the guardian and tells him, you have a million dollars for me, give it to me right now. He doesn't give it to him. Got it? The other situation, or Majnun, someone who's crazy as well. The other situation is dead, like the story of Mu'ad, with the, the Prophet Sallallahu with Mu'ad. Mu'ad is in, a de in debt. The Prophet Sallallahu freezes his asset, so he would pay Sallallahu the debt of Mu'ad. Is that for the benefit of Mu'ad or for the benefit of others? <coughs> For others. So these are the two kinds of al-hajjah when we talk about. Qal Musannif, rahimahullah. Now all this is introduction. Now we see what Ibn Qudam rahimahullah said. Bab wa ahkamu al-din. The bab or the, the section of the rulings of al-din, of debt. And we said, he mentioned some of the ahkam of ahkam al-din, but the main topic is hajjah. Okay? Asset. Freezing. Okay. Okay. This is the first rule of Ahkam al Day, which is in debt. If we agree, let's say I bought a car from you over 12 months, I pay you every month part of it. You have no right to come to me and ask me for the money before the time. As a, as, as a seller or as a lender. We talked about different opinions when we talk about loans. And that can fall into this. As a lender, as a seller, if you sell muhajjad, yani you sell financing, whatever. You have no right to come to that buyer or to the borrower and tell him, you pay me now. I don't want to wait. Even though some of the opinion said that the lender has the right, the right for his money, but the right opinion, because that is the agreement. The agreement, if I had money to pay you off the whole thing, if I was interested in paying the whole, I wouldn't. But when you come to me two days later and you want all your money, then what is the point of the agreement? Okay? So that is one of the ahkam of it then. That if you lend someone, or if you someone buys from you, uh, in financing or he will pay you in a month or repay you in two months, you have to respect that. And you have no right, even though the money is yours after two months or after a month or you're the one who will lend the money, you have no right to ask for it before the time. Okay? Before before time. <clears throat> and you have no right to ask for asset freezing of this person, obviously. If you don't have the right to ask for it, then you have no right to take him to, to the judge to establish the, the al-hajr, or asset freeze. Uh, what that means is, if I if I am in debt to you, and very important, I don't want to say if I owe you, or if I want to say I borrow. I owe you. It can be through borrowing, it can be through buying, it can be through many things, okay? If I owe you $1,000, or I'm in debt to you for $1,000, and you're supposed to get it in January, and today we are in, in October, January next year. If I go today bankrupt, okay, if I go bankrupt, I have business, I have a big shipment coming, coming over, it drowns. So I'm bankrupt. I put all my money in it, bankrupt. You still don't have the right to request or to ask for your money because it's not time yet okay got that 
Whatever happens to the person in debt, 